Hey guys, want to take a quick minute here to kind of uh, explain one of our products that y'all have been talking about. Uh, it's our soft opaque. It's a CAD color soft opaque. It's our printable media. Uh, the other option to express print. Uh, everybody loves soft opaque because it is thin and stretchable and has an amazing hand. So the finished product is great, but I'm hearing a lot of you saying, I don't care for the way that it masks. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration on uh, how it can work for you. And uh, you'll see the results and hopefully it'll, uh, it'll fix things for you. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are, already printed uh, these designs on the soft opaque. This has been printed for a little over an hour or so. Uh, so I do sometimes let it gas out, let it dry before I attempt, especially if I have considerable issues uh, with masking. So we're gonna start with the weeding process. It's just like everything else that you've ever weeded. Uh, this being a real thin product, it does weed really nicely. So bear with me as we uh, go through this wonderful task of weeding. And I'm doing all three designs because I want to show a couple different methods of masking. Uh. You can see the stretchability in the product as we're pull pulling it away, which ultimately gives you a great hand. But I do want us to give this a fair shake. If it's not for you, it's not for you, but or for your your customers, but I do want to have the opportunity to see what it can do for you. Okay, design has been weeded. Now we're going to mask. This is our standard uh, medium tech mask. I know that it says on our website probably to use the solutions mask. Nobody likes the solutions mask because it tends to curl and it's very thin, it wants to tear. I typically mask like this. Some people do it upside down. I'm used to doing it this way. Build it down the middle, slide out to the edges. And I'm gonna start in the middle and just give some pretty good pressure. If you know you've got some issues, make sure you lean into it. And as an extra precaution, after I know I've got good coverage here, and I'm going to pull it off from the back anyway, I'll go ahead and give it a few from the back. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart because I want to show two different methods. Of releasing this. All right, so we'll start with this one in the center. And I'm just going to use it traditionally and see if I can make it fail. That's crazy talk, right? I like to peel the carrier off of the mask. So I just do horizontally as much as possible. And I have a feeling that this is probably going to do just fine. So I won't even be able to show you the issues that most people are having or a lot of people have described. Yeah. All right, so here's a good. This, I've actually had a little bit of failure. Nothing that I couldn't fix. I have a few little bubbles right here. Um, I wouldn't press it as is. I would probably lift this, lift this up a little bit and let it, let it fall back into where it belongs. But you can see with the curling, it can give you some problems. This is the issue that folks are having. Let's show you the way that I like it. Kind of like taking off a Band-Aid. Once you get started and get yourself a nice uh, couple edges to get hold of, this could be a little bit loud, so I apologize. Just give it a quick and you're golden. No issues. Want to see it again? The trick is hold it vertically, you know, hold it in the air. Don't lay down, not pulled sideways, but hold it in the air. And just like pulling off a Band-Aid, you just give it a quick and it works. Sorcery, I tell you. So that's it. Those of you who have those types of issues, this type of uh, lifting that we've, we experienced on this first one with the traditional uh, release of the mask, this has proven to be a, a great option a good alternative to, to masking. 
Appreciate your time today and hope this works out.